Hi, my name is Owen Magab Inao, and welcome to Hi of VirtualAssistant.com, and where we provide entrepreneurs with exceptional virtual assistant. And on my blog, I do have a show where I bring on small business owners to come on the show and share their insights with you, so that you can you know, learn from their experience and use whatever they talk about on during the interviews and apply it in your business. Today, I have Celia Milton from CeliaMilton.com. She actually is a, a wedding officiant, and the reason why I interviewed uh, Celia Milton was twofold. The first one was that you know her story of how she got started basically just goes to tell you that it's never too late to move forward with your dream. You, you can always begin, uh, your, you know, working in your passion, working on that your idea, you know, and, and move forward and start getting it uh, uh, working. You know, go out there and do whatever that you have in your mind to do. You know, just it's, it's never it's never going to be perfect. So just take. Take on the idea and run with it. And the other reason why I interviewed uh, Celia is because she knows who her clients are. She gets the idea of you know the right type of clients for her business because the way she approaches uh, a, a, a wedding officiating business is that she wants to you know give clients an you know an experience that you know they won't usually get from. Uh, the, the typical wedding uh, officiant. So she knows that she needs to know the type of clients beforehand. So I brought her on uh, on the show because I want her to you know to share some insights with you so that you can apply this to your business and take it out there and figure out okay what type of clients do you really need to be working with who which what type of clients represents the type of service that you provide I look forward to talking to you at the end of the show thank you Hi everyone, uh, welcome to HireYourVirtualAssistant.com and today I am hosting, uh, actually talking to Celia Milton. Um, tell them where you're from. I am from New Jersey. I'm right outside of New York City. Yeah, and, and what is it that you, that you do for your business? I tell, you know what, I tell people I do, I do's. I, uh, <laughs> I write and perform weddings and civil unions which are legal in New Jersey. That's nice. That's nice. So you, you do, I do. I, I like that. That term, I was like, what she say? I do, too. <laughs> That's good. So uh, I wanted you to take some time and you know introduce yourself to my audience and also go ahead and talk about what your company do do and your company and all that. Well, I was thinking that I wanted to be a parish minister. I was looking for a career change. I was in my late 40s and I owned a catering business. And I knew I didn't want to do that forever. So I went back to seminary and I thought, you know, this would be fun to be a parish minister. Well, when I actually got into a church, I realized that there are fun parts and there are not so fun parts. Like, who's going who's gonna to order the candles for the sanctuary? I had no interest in that whatsoever. So I signed up to train as an officiant. And I graduated in 2005. And literally a week after I was ordained, I had my first wedding. Wow. And uh, I've never looked back. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that's good because for me right now, I'm actually going through the process with my fiance of trying to get the wedding started and planned. And she, she has a whole idea of the, how the wedding should be. I'm just showing up for the wedding, basically. That, that happens <laughs> to a lot of girls. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. And, and you said, so you basically officiate weddings. That's what, you know, you, you do, right? Yes. I, w I work with my couples, um, mo mostly people who don't have a church affiliation or a temple affiliation. They want to do something a little different, um, a little funny. Maybe they want to have their dog be the ring bearer. Maybe, you know, they've got friends that are going to sing or play music. And it's something that's a little bit offbeat. So I work with what they want to have. Um, instead of telling them what they're going to have, I work what they want, and we write something together, and then I perform it and make it legal. So give me an example of how something can be offbeat and physically officiated. Oh, I've got a great one this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, you picked a good day to call me because this morning I officiated for a vow renewal for a couple in front of the cyclone, which is one of the oldest roller coasters in the United States. <laughs> 
and they had been married for five years, and their life had been a roller coaster of ups and downs and all kinds of good things and bad things, and the wife decided that she was going to surprise her husband with a trip to Coney Island in New York, and I officiated, I redid their vows in front of this roller coaster. It was a hoot. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's the, the perfect way to actually symbolize what they've been going through in a roller coaster. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It was perfect, and he was surprised. It was lovely. And we had, you know, fire trucks and people getting arrested in back of us. I mean, it was like typical <laughs> New York day, you know. Nothing stops for a wedding. Oh, yeah. And one of the things that I really uh, enjoyed when I read your email was that you said, you know, you started your business, I mean, if, uh, permit me to say that, but you started your, your, your business when you were 49. So to me, that was like yes. your dream of doing anything you want to do can actually start at any time. And, and explain to us, yeah. you know, how that happened. Well, you know, I think that we all, I think for everybody, the ideal situation is to do what you love and get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And I just got to, I got to an age where I said to myself, if not now, when? What am I waiting for? And you know how long? And I, I had a business that I loved. I, I was a caterer. It was, but it was very physical, and it was a lot of hard work. And I'd done it for 20 years. Okay. And I just thought, you know, wh why not now? If I don't do it now, you know what? I'm going to be 50 next year, regardless of whether I do it or not. And in five years, guess what? I'm going to be 54. And if you don't follow your dreams, mm -hmm. the time is never going to be perfect. You know, <laughs> yeah. people. People wait till I don't have enough money, I can't do it now, I don't have enough help, blah, 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 the economy is terrible. If you don't do it at a time that's imperfect, you'll never do it at all because there is no perfect time. And, and what happened the day it just hit you that, you know, you just said, I'm doing this. Oh, I, I remember the exact day. I was working for I was working for another caterer. I had sold my business and I was working for a lovely, lovely guy. And being a caterer was his dream. He started his business when he was in his late forties as well. And I went to work for him and I needed to take a day off because I had this crazy wedding I needed to do. The bride was Chinese and her mother had figured out all the astrology and they needed to get married on a Tuesday in March before noon south of Secaucus and they called me I'm like I'm your girl I'm there for you and it was a beautiful day and now March in New York that can be it can be terrible but this was beautiful the sky was perfect it was gorgeous and I got in my car I had my day off from my real job I'd never had a real job before got in, took the day off got in the car drove down to the beach and did this fabulous little wedding at the water's edge and I got back in the car I said you know I could do this, and if I did this four times a week, I don't have to work a job. I mean, it is a job, but I don't, I don't have to go to an office. I can get up. I can go into my computer. I can write my weddings. I go and perform. This, I could do this, and I went back, and I quit the next day. I Actually, my last day was my, my 50th birthday. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was my last day. <laughs> that is it. And, and that's just so good because, you know, if you're doing something that you love, it doesn't even look like work, you know. I'm it kidding. doesn't. Look at the time now. We, we, we're actually having this conversation talking about what, what you do. And, I mean, I, I should be tired at this point, but I'm enjoying what I'm doing, talking to you about your business. And that's really what the whole thing about is, is you go out there and get involved in something that you love doing, you know. It's true. And, and you know what, if you, if you really love what you do, it comes through in everything that you do, and your customers know that, your clients know that. They, they know that you're not just doing, they're not just a paycheck for you. There's something that you're really engaged in. And, and you know, I have friends who do the strangest things that they say they love. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how you could love renting chairs for a living, but I have <laughs> colleagues that, you know, when they rent a hundred chairs with covers, this like make this is their day. They are they are happy, and you know it makes a difference. It really does. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's and, and how do you actually get across that whole uh, for, for your clients, for instance? Like I mean, give me an example of how something you've done for them has actually showed them that this is the business we love doing. I mean, I want to get some more precise examples. Well, I say that in every ceremony I do. Every ceremony has a little piece where I say, you know what, I'm a celebrant and I have the best job in the world. But, uh, well, I think that, you know, when you're in a business that my business is basically entertainment okay. and everything that I do is entertaining. My invoices are entertaining. 
my contracts are entertaining. From the first time that people call me, they're entertained. Now, that might not work if you're a tax attorney. You know, you may not want your tax attorney to be entertaining. You want them to be authoritative. But every everything that you do, your product isn't just the only thing that you're selling. You're selling the whole entire experience from the first time that those people land on your website to the time they speak to you on the phone to the thank you note afterwards. It's all part of that experience. Yeah, I, I get that because if, if, if you're selling the business of entertaining them at their wedding then and, and your presentation, even the invoice or when you meet them the first time doesn't really gel or give them that idea of what you're doing, then, well, what are you it has selling? To be. Yeah. It, it has to be different, and, you know, you have to find your niche and make that niche lead everything that you do so that it's all coherent with that niche. So the niche of what you're doing, is, it, is this something that you kind of stumbled onto when you started this whole wedding officiating thing, or you, you figured out from the very beginning that that's what you wanted to do? Well, I knew, um, when I started the business, I knew I wanted to do weddings and only weddings. I mean, I, I do baby welcomings once in a while. I do some memorial services occasionally, and they're usually for families for which I have done a wedding first. But I'm very clear about who my client is. I don't want every single wedding that comes across my doorstep because there are people who are not right for me and vice versa. You know, I want the person who wants something really different from the first words that I utter, which are never, dearly beloved, here we are to be bored to death. We're not starting that way. <laughs> No, okay. we're, we're okay. not going down that road because everybody knows that shorthand for like, oh, 20 minutes of boredom is coming up. When am I going to get a glass of wine already, you know? <laughs> oh, I need to have a client that has a sense of humor, that has, that has a certain importance for their ceremony because not everybody does. Mm -hmm. You know, a ceremony for a lot of people is something they need to get through in order to be married and have a party. And those are not my clients. And, and, and I know that, you know, you, you already know, I have an idea of your client. So... When you come across a client that is not your client, I mean, how do you go about letting them know? Because some business owners might have that difficulty of saying, okay, I know you want to make use of my business, but they don't know how to tell those who are not their right clients, I mean, the perfect candidate for them, that I cannot do yeah. work for you. So how do you go about that step? Well, you know, I think if you hone all your materials, and it, and it doesn't happen, you know, you put your first website up, and it's not going to be a perfect website. I mean, the important thing is having a web presence and, and having a marketing presence. But I think as you, as you learn who the people you want to work for, who they are, you hone your marketing so that that person knows what they're getting into when they get to your website. You know, I, I know that there are people who don't call me because my website doesn't speak to them. Yeah. And and that's fine because that's that's not my my client. But that's I think that's an evolutionary process. Oh, yeah.